Hey guys, sorry it's been a while. Uh, today I want to talk about get home bags. Uh, so this bag and the contents of the bag. Uh, I'm just putting all this other gear out here as gear that's in my car. Just uh, I'm going to do a part two about other gear that I keep in my car that isn't necessarily in my bag but may or may not make it into my bag depending on the situation. And the reason I'm putting that out front here is just because uh, any of you gearheads are going to see this uh, video on my bag and be like, oh, what about this? Or what about that? Or have you thought about putting this in there? Uh, chances are yes, uh, and that's separate. I have access to it, and if I want to put it in my bag, I can. But for now, I'm just going to go over uh, in part one the bag and the contents of the bag. And if you're interested in all this other stuff, then stay tuned for a part two. So this is my get home bag. It's not my uh, bug out bag. So I'm not going to be taking this from my house and going and bugging out in the woods where I'll need shelter and ways to prepare food and find food. Uh, this is just to get me as quickly as possible from, in my scenario, uh, my office back home. So I live in Colorado uh, in the Denver area where the weather's pretty mild most of the time. So uh, this bag is for my uh, late spring, summer, early fall bag. So no real winter supplies in this bag. Um, and I live uh, less than 20 miles away from where I work. So I'm typically never more than 20 miles away, so this bag is under the assumption that I'm going to be within a 20 mile walk of my home. Um, so really you want to keep things lightweight. You want to carry the bare minimum, really. You don't want to carry everything for any possible scenario you would encounter, otherwise your bag would be 50 pounds and you wouldn't be able to make uh, the 20 mile trip as fast as you would with a lighter pack. So the good advice that you hear from uh, backpackers and people in the know is that you want to get all of the gear that you want to put in your bag and then find a bag that just fits that gear not a bag that's bigger for that gear because otherwise if you find a bag that's bigger then you're going to find more gear to put in it and you're going to weigh yourself down um, and that is a great philosophy uh, I'm not using it exactly in this bag my bag has a lot of extra room uh, for more stuff than I have in it and the reason being is because I have a lot of items in my car that I may add uh, to the bag some supplement uh, supplemental items that aren't super core but they may be nice depending on the situation at hand so I have extra room in my bag um, so if you want to go down that route just make sure you don't fill all the extra room up leave some space uh, if you're you know using the same mentality as me you might want to toss some extra stuff from your car into your bag um, so this is a three-day assault pack uh, from Condor uh, it's in multi-cam too uh, and I can already hear the comments people saying oh it's too tactical you want to blend in uh, and I agree to some extent, but if uh, it's a crap at the fan scenario, then there may be riots, and I won't be a target for the riot groups. I'll just be a guy trying to walk home. Uh, there will be a lot of panic and a lot of chaos uh, in which maybe somebody will think I'm like some militant guy and be a little afraid of me, and I'm okay with that if they want to be afraid of me. Um, but it won't be, you know, like the road or something where you have bandits walking around trying to find gear from like the tactical guy uh, maybe weeks or months down the road but like within hours of whatever panic it is then I'm just gonna be a guy walking home just like everybody else so uh, I personally like multicam so I chose multicam uh, if you want to go with something a little more uh, regular every day then by all means go for it but uh, in my mindset having a tactical bag won't make you a target any more than anything else will uh, so let's talk about some bag features real quick um, I would say you want two straps on your bag rather than one of those messenger style bags um, because it's more secure it's gonna be more stable it's gonna uh, distribute the weight of your pack easier um, and you're gonna be running and jumping over things so it's just two straps is always better um, if you have just an EDC pack that's a messenger bag okay but this is going to have more gear in it, uh, and you're going to want to be more mobile in it. So I would go with uh, two straps. Uh, in addition to the two straps, uh, great to have a sternum strap that holds these two straps together so they don't slip off of your shoulders. It keeps everything just tighter and more secure. Um, you might want to grab a pack with hip straps. Um, and that, again, is to keep your pack close to your body so it doesn't bounce uh, as you run. Uh, and also this this one not so much, but some packs the hip uh, the hip strap is meant to carry uh, most of the load of the pack to take the weight off of your shoulders. This one doesn't do it as much, but it does do it a little bit. So I would say those are some features you want to look for in a pack that you're going to put any kind of weight in uh, and do any kind of traveling in. So let's just start on the exterior here. Um, I have a 
SOG seal pup knife. Uh, and no, I'm not like Rambo or anything. And I'm not like a lot of these other guys that have like six knives or seven knives in their bag. Uh, I just have a single fixed blade knife uh, and it's pretty light. Uh, I have it here on my strap, that way I can access it at any time. I know where it is, nobody's like taking it off my back if it's if it's lashed onto my back, it's uh, right here where I can access it. So it's the, this is the SOG Seal Pup, uh, and it's a relatively lightweight, inexpensive, uh, quality knife. Uh, you'll find millions of reviews on it. This is the partially serrated uh, handle, is super comfortable uh, and very grippy. Um, then we have some paracord, uh, I think about 75 feet of paracord, just 550 stuff, uh, seven strand, uh, a climbing carabiner. I have two uh, Uniden walkie-talkies. Uh, I can use these for a variety of reasons. Uh, communication obviously is the main one. And uh, two whistles here. Uh, if I have another party in my group and we want to be able to communicate uh, without yelling uh, and giving away things. Uh, also, if it's in a typical emergency situation, a uh, whistle is great to draw attention to yourself. Uh, two little LED lights. Some of these uh, clamps that uh, hook into your uh, Molly straps that I can lash more gear onto my pack if I need to. Uh, and then just some little uh, bungees. Um, now let's get into the pack. So here we'll get into the uh, most exterior pocket. It has a single zipper from the side here. Um, and I just keep some smaller items. Uh, some hand warmers I keep in here kind of year round. I throw a couple more packs in there in the winter. Uh, just a cheapy uh, rain poncho. Uh, a map of your location. It's a good thing to have. I don't necessarily need it, but it's pretty lightweight and slim. So I have it in there just in case I need to reference it. Uh, it's a good idea to map out your, uh, your trek home from wherever you might be uh, and find your water sources at least. At the very least, find your water sources because you're going to be trying to filter water out of there later. Uh, so if you want to mark that on the map, great. If you have other things you want to mark on the map, like you have some cash or something, then go for it. Uh, I also have some cash, other kind of cash. Uh, a couple hundred bucks here, a lot of ones, some fives, tens, twenties, uh, and some change. Uh, change for like vending machines or to make a call if I need to, as well as uh, an expired concealed carry permit in case I need some kind of identification and I don't have my uh, wallet with me. This kind of shows that, hey, I'm a good guy and this is who I am. I'm going to this next pocket here. This is kind of, uh, has a lot of organization in it. I have some zip ties just for, you know, whatever. I have a five hour energy and that's for uh, in case the catastrophe happens at night. Uh, I'm going to walk through the night anyway to get home. I'm just going to walk it straight through. I'm not going to set up a shelter or anything. So if I need a little more energy, uh, that's, that's good. Five hour energy is pretty good on me. Uh, just a regular pair of scissors. Uh, I have a heavier duty pair of shears in my med kit that I keep in my mat pocket in my car. But these, I probably don't need them. I might be able to shave a little bit of weight and not use these. Um, I have some hand sanitizer, which is good to have. A lot of people have a bug spray also, but really the bug problem in Denver is pretty much non-existent, so I don't have that. But depending on where you are, you might want it. Um, just a cheapy monocle or monocle. Um, and this is a really lightweight one. It's not very good. Uh, there's a variety of use cases I could see myself uh, liking this, but this isn't really a core item. It might be one that uh, I ditch from my pack sooner or later. And then I have two Sharpies for leaving notes or writing on yourself or whatever you might have to do with them. Uh, Sharpies are great to have. I have a little four inch uh, crescent wrench. And this goes from about 14 or 15 millimeters down and then up to about uh, a half, in half inch. Um, and this is tiny uh, and lightweight and so many uses for this. A lot of these guys I see in these bug out bags carrying these uh, water keys. Uh, and the mentality is if you're in an urban scenario, you're going to use these to uh, open water spigots on the exterior of buildings or whatever. Uh, and that's a good idea. It's a great water source to have uh, if it's accessible. But this does everything this will do for about the same price, uh, lighter, more compact, uh, and has infinitely more uses than just this. So if you have one of these, cool, uh, time to upgrade uh, and get a little crescent wrench. 
Uh, I have a flashlight. I have a few more flashlights in my car. I have an EDC flashlight that I carry every day. Uh, but I also have this one in my bag. This is a Jetbeam BA10. It's a nice little LED light with a, a couple of modes. Um, single AA. I have some wet wipes, obviously, just for a variety of reasons. I'm kind of a clean freak, so sometimes I use these after shooting, but also in a scenario where I'm just hiking a long distance and my hands might get dirty for whatever reasons, uh, these are nice to have. Um, I have some pills just in a bag, so antihistamines, uh, like some Advil, and then some uh, aspirin. Uh, I keep the aspirin in here because uh, my dad had a heart attack, and other people might have heart attacks. It's good to chew two pills, uh, not just Advil, but aspirin, um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, after you have a heart attack, uh, it helps thin the blood and can save lives. So I keep a couple of those in here too. Um, also, so I know what they are, diarrhea. These are... Uh, pills that if you somehow manage to drink a sketchy water source or food uh, on your journey home and get some kind of food poisoning, uh, that won't make it all better, but it will help a little bit. Um, then I have some batteries, uh, some lithium double A's and some lithium triple A's in here. I have a compass. Uh, I think it's a Silva compass. also has a magnifying glass on it. Uh, in Colorado, I won't really need one because it's so easy to navigate by the Rocky Mountains. They're always west. Um, but it's a good item to have uh, for most people, uh, myself included. A uh, little pack of gum because, you know, when I finally make it home, uh, I want my breath to smell fresh. A uh, variety of keys, including a little handcuff key in here, uh, color-coded for different uh, locations I might be needing to get to. Uh, there's one more little pack in here. I have... What do I have? Oh, a battery uh, charger. I have another battery charger in my glove box for my cell phone. Um, so you want to keep that thing charged, assuming there's still uh, a grid that you can use. Uh, also, I have a variety of apps on my phone, survival apps and GPS and stuff that will still probably be in service even if the uh, cell phone networks go down. So this is just one. I have a, a bigger one in my glove compartment. Uh, some earplugs. This is a little LED, uh, flashing LED signal beacon type light with a 3M adhesive backing. They could stick for a communication or just whatever so your party can help follow you. I have a couple of these. Um, I have some post-it notes. I don't have a right in the rain because I really don't jot down notes that often, but I might want to leave uh, information behind for somebody. Uh, and always, you know, I can use this for fire starters. So this isn't a super crucial piece of kit for me, but it doesn't weigh that much and it doesn't take much space, so I have it. Uh, another couple pairs of earplugs, and that's for in the event I do have to sleep, then this may help me depending on where I am. Uh, and also, since I do carry around guns, if, you know, heaven forbid, I do need to get into some kind of a gun battle and I have time to prepare and put earplugs in, I probably will. Um, and I have just a uh, thing of chapstick. So in this lower compartment here, I have an SOL uh, emergency two-person bivy. Uh, this is another item I'm not really planning on ever having to uh, set up camp or sleep or have any shelter, but you know, there may be something, I may get injured, I may come across some kind of shock, uh, or I may just need to give this to somebody else. I have it in there. Um, yeah. I have a little first aid kit. I have a more comprehensive first aid kit in my map pocket, like I was saying, that is more of an IFAC trauma kit with uh, tourniquets and quick clot and everything. Uh, this is more little cuts and bruises and burns and things like that. It has a couple pairs of gloves in here. Um, you know, for little boo-boos and stuff, uh, but also has some compression gauze and some other things in here. Uh, a pair of wool socks. Uh, inside here I have a little AM, FM, Sony radio, in case I need to listen to the news or something, uh, and head, headphones in, in case I need to do it uh, discreetly, just some little earbuds. This is an item, you know, I don't know, I'm not planning on fishing really, but some 10 pound, fesh, uh, 10 pound test uh, fishing line for, you know, there's a variety of reasons. It's so lightweight and small that it's hard for me to give this item up, but uh, it's not a super necessary item in my eyes. Uh, and then a little space blanket, 
And then I have another, there's another pocket in here where I have a pair of uh, athletic uh, moisture wicking socks as well. So a couple pairs of extra socks because you're going to be walking for a while. Um, so the side compartment over here is my kind of fix it and fire starting compartment. So I have a little roll of Gorilla Tape, uh, duct tape wrapped around a card, and a couple things of super glue in here. Uh, some fire starting gear. So I have two mini Bic lighters and a pair of water or a set of waterproof matches uh, and some wet fire. I don't have uh, any kind of fire striker because uh, fires are so much easier to start with lighters. Um, so I don't know why I wouldn't just carry a backup to a backup. Uh, I'm not that great at starting fires with a uh, little fire stick anyway, so I don't carry one. I have uh, some signaling flares, which I can also use to start a pretty intense fire if I need to, uh, and also obviously signal. And I just have a couple of chem lights, and that's it for this pocket. Uh, on the other side, I have a pocket that's uh, pretty much identical, just reverse. Uh, it's empty right now, I don't have anything in it. So I may toss extra gear or water bottle in there if I need to. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned before, but this pack, everything you see in it is about 15 pounds. Uh, I'd like to get it less than that, but that's what it is right now. Uh, this is the final big compartment. It's got a little bit of interior organization here. Uh, here we have a bandana. And then we have a couple of just gauze pads. A uh, red bag is food, as well as Gatorade. So if you're walking a long distance, you're going to be depleting a lot of uh, water, uh, as well as salts. So you're going to want to replenish those. Uh, and Gatorade, uh, it's got electrolytes. Uh, I wish I had Brondo, the thirst mutilator, but just Gatorade for now. Uh, and this uh, does double duty, depending on where you're filtering your water from. Uh, to replenish your uh, initial water supply, uh, it may not taste very good, and this will help with the taste also. So I have some of these in the food bag, I think three or four of them in there. Uh, I have these, uh, if you're curious what they actually are, it's Cascadium Farm uh, Protein Honey Roasted Nut Chewy Bar. So I try not to put any uh, chocolate items in here because melt, they'll melt, but these, uh, I put the expiration date uh, in a little reminder in my phone, so when it goes off, I swap these out. Uh, and eat them and then put a new batch in here. So I have about five of those. Uh, I have a couple of granola bars here. Looks like two or three just regular granola bars. I usually have some beef jerky. But it looks like for now I have Slim Jims in here, just these little tiny ones. And I have like six or seven of them in here. Uh, and I don't want to pack like an MRE or mountain house or anything like that, anything that I have to prepare. This is just food. I'm going as fast as possible. Even if I didn't have this, I wouldn't die. This is a little energy, gives me something to do, uh, and I like snacking. So um, basically, I just try to do stuff that I can eat on the go that doesn't need any prep time. Uh, water bottles, just a one liter of smart water. I also have a stainless steel clean canteen in my car that I may or may not put in this pack. Um, but this is good because it goes well with the uh, Sawyer water filter. This is a cheap, pretty good uh, squeeze through filter. Uh, it's well reviewed, it's relatively inexpensive and lightweight, and comes with uh, an extra collapsible uh, water bottle. So this will screw on to either this lid or this, and either I can put the bad water in here, squirt it into the good water source, or I could put the bad water in, screw it on, and drink directly from uh, the sport top. So I like this as opposed to like a life straw because it's uh, has more uses and also has a an extra water bottle. Uh, in here I also have some camping toilet paper that I could use to start fires or obviously use it as toilet paper. Uh, some shop paper towels here you can use for fire starter cleaning up. Again, I have a couple bags, uh, some Ziploc bags and some trash bags for a water collection or whatever else I might need to do and then some uh, just some camp soap little individual individual things because uh, again I like to stay clean. So uh, also uh, Under Armour Multicam Baklava. This is more of a winter item but you know it could protect me from sun exposure or whatever else. Uh, and then some N95 masks. This is another situational one. Probably won't be needing this but uh, depending on the situation I may want to may want to put those on for a little added uh, safety. Uh, and I also have uh, Talking about safety, I have uh, sunscreen also, uh, but I keep that in my 
pocket of my car because I use it pretty often if I'm going disc golfing or whatever. Uh, so that's a good thing to have. And that does it for my pack, but oh, also there's one more pocket in here for a uh, water bladder, which I don't have in there right now. Instead, I have a uh, 5x7 multicam tarp, uh, waterproof, relatively lightweight. Again, I'm probably not going to be uh, looking to hunker down or get any shelter, but if I did, I would want to blend in, and multicam works uh, incredibly well uh, in most Colorado uh, landscape. So that's there. This is an item I might ditch because really my whole mentality is not to find shelter, but you know, depending on what the weather's like or what's going on, I may need to use it for shelter. Uh, and that's it in the pack, actually. So everything, I think I mentioned before, about 15 pounds. Uh, and I want to lighten that up a little bit, so I'm kind of always trying to shed items that aren't crucial. Uh, and this is just, you know, a, a snapshot of where I'm at right now. So if you're subscribed to me, it's probably because guns. Um, and a lot of you may be wondering, do I have a trunk gun? What do I do for firepower? I do. This is it. This is a AR-15 pistol, 10.5-inch, uh, uh, relatively streamlined and lightweight, uh, and a purpose-built gun for keeping in my trunk. Do I think I'll have to use it? Probably not. Am I paranoid? No. Uh, but it's a good thing to have, a little added security, because uh, it's obviously a lot more firepower than a pistol. Um, so I'll go more into that in the part two of this video where I cover the other items that I keep in my car. Thanks for watching.